So today I would like to talk about the challenge of building learning organisations um, uh, in policing. And now let me be clear, I've got more, answers than I, uh, more questions than I have answers. Um, and to skip to the end, I'm not really entirely sure where we're heading with all of this. Which in itself, of course, is characteristic of the challenge of police leadership. Um, most of the time, we actually don't know where we're going in leadership. And one of our greatest hurdles in policing is admitting that to ourselves and to those that are looking to us to show them the way. Harvard leadership scholar Ron Heifetz calls it the art of disappointing people at a rate they can absorb, um, which is something I hope I can do for the next 40 minutes or so. So apart from disappointment, feeling disappointed, what else can you expect from the next 40 minutes from me? Well, my aim is to sketch an impressionist landscape of uh, learning organisations, point out some of the more interesting features along the way, uh, and, and allude to some of the choices that we have. My perspective is naturally Australian. My examples are inevitably Australian, but my intention is really to provoke a shared conversation about how our profession evolves. In doing so, I hope very much to meet the vision of the James Smart Lecture Series as a means to promote uh, and widen the, de uh, the deepening of thought in, in policing. <coughs> I should start by giving you uh, a little bit of um, broader context about my perspective. So I work at the Australian Institute of Police Management, which is sited on Sydney's glorious harbour shore, uh, in the suburb of Manly, which has the strap line seven miles from Sydney, a thousand miles from Care. Um, but it's actually about an hour in a cab from the airport. It's a very special place to work, and it provides a physical and a metaphysical retreat for police and public safety leaders from around Australia, New Zealand, and our region. Um, we have great reciprocal relationships with our colleagues in Canada, the US and of course the UK. We've worked building leadership capacity in places like the Middle East and across the Pacific. And last year we connected with more than 7,000 people digitally, 800 organisations globally and conducted 145 learning activities involving more than 3,000 participants. The AIPM, and I should probably warn you that one of my distinctly Australian habits is speaking in fluent acronym, um, is set up as a national common police service. We report to a board of control, uh, comprising the nine police commissioners of Australia and New Zealand, who represent uh, between them 88,000 members dispersed across 8 million uh, square kilometres. These members uh, combined uh, serve a combined population of almost 30 million people, uh, although I remember from my days in London that sometimes it can feel as if most of them are here. The purpose of the AIPM is to develop individual and organisational leadership capacity. Our work to that end is as a facilitator of knowledge, both tacit and codified, as an explorer of policing's intellectual frontiers, and to support the profession through education and professional development. We posture ourselves as thought provocateurs, um, as a place to explore dangerous ideas, and as stewards and purveyors of the stories that challenge us. 